Welcome back to my walkthrough for the consequence, my friends. In this walkthrough, I'm showing you the location of all the collectibles. And in this part, it will also be a no damage run. So we're just going to start by heading down the steps before we witness another cutscene. And then we'll get our first collectible. Was quite insane. A compromise of ethics on our part. He seemed motivated, obsessed with revenge against something never specified. We discovered what he was doing in secret. Torturing. A penchant for traps. A serial killer masquerading around as a scientist. Okay, so there's the collectible. It's another music soundtrack. So this would be collectible number three in this chapter. The first two collectibles are obtained in the previous part of the walkthrough. And for those of you who might be watching this on your phone, in the description of my video you'll also find a timeline where I show you the time where I pick up each collectible. So if you're looking for the collectibles and you can't see the annotations because you're using a mobile version, you can check it out on my video description. It's all there for you. Let's get collectible number four now. His demeanor has turned far too aggressive and his techniques even more perverse. Da Vinci would dissect corpses to further his anatomical studies, but what Rubin has done goes beyond demanding his subjects be aware as he dissects them to truly see how the mind reacts. He's more of a butcher than an artist. But we must remain scientists above all. I had taught him from a young age that the end shall justify the means, but I could not have predicted things to be this extreme. Mobius has learned of his involvement due to my carelessness. I've asked they bring him on board to assist in development. Perhaps offering him better facilities and support will refocus him and stave off his gruesome proclivities. This machine was designed for me. People like you, you took my life away, turned me into an abomination. Finally, with this machine, I can go back. I can live the life I was supposed to have. We are forgiving. We are willing to overlook your certain peculiarities for what you can provide us. But you are testing our limits, our manpower, our resources are not here for your pathetic fantasy. You will reverse the calibration on the machine so we can use it without you. And what if I say no? You think he menace can fix this? <laughs> you need me, and there's no way around it. Ruvik. No. Reuben. This was where he was doing his research with us. We were just using him, and I doubt he's the first. Well, to be honest, Mobius needed Ruvik's brain. They really didn't need anything else, so they kind of got him that way. And we're about to have the encounter with the Light Lady, so that's going to be fairly intense for this chapter. She can be a little bit annoying. So I'm going to focus on that for now. As soon as Kidman turns around, don't even bother pressing the X button, just start running. Because if she catches you, it's an automatic game over and we don't want that. However, we do have enough time to touch this panel right here. And now we're going to quickly go into hiding. But keep in mind you only have time to do this if you didn't take a look back to see the light lady she might catch up with you otherwise and you might not have enough time to touch the panel then you can just use the desks to hide usually the place that I hid myself is usually a pretty good hiding spot and now you need to make a run through here but we're not in the clear yet And this next sequence can be a little bit frustrating. Here she comes again, so we're immediately going to run. Oh shit, it's back. 
Now you might be encouraged to go to the panel straight away. Don't do it. Oh, and the, she spotted me. Okay, I wasn't counting on this, but if this happens, guys, there's really only one thing you can do, and that's zigzag your way across all these computer hard drives. I guess you can call them that. And hide yourself again until she eventually doesn't spot you anymore. It is a little bit tricky, but it works. My advice is that you don't run in a straight line because she will catch up to you and Kidman is slowed down when she has the light focused on her so you do need to be careful there but as I was saying you should not touch the panel immediately even before she gets inside the room because the time that it takes you to touch the panel she will immediately come towards you and most likely kill you so Please don't do it I advise that you hide yourself wait for her to run towards this side and she always runs towards the door first and then oh she spotted me again time to hide come on but like i was saying only press the panel after she moves away from the door otherwise she will spot you and then you just a matter of staying hidden until the door opens so we're just going to wait for her to go to the other side and then we're going to calmly get out of here oh and as soon as you get inside the elevator guys do yourself a favor and duck trust me if you don't do it This happens. And yeah, I know there was a little bit of a dramatic pause there. But if you don't put yourself in a crouch position, then you will find yourself getting hit with a red shoe or a red high heel on your head and that will deliver heavy damage. However, if you crouch, then you won't take any damage at all. So it's something that you can do. And we're not in the clear yet, because remember those blind exploding enemies? Well, they're back. And they're even more explosive this time. They're really trigger happy. So what's going to happen here, as I peek through under this shelf, this guy's gonna turn red. I'm sure of it. There we go. And this the moron's going to explode. Hopefully taking down with him a few others. There we go. So that kind of clears a path for us. We're just going to wait for that guy to change colors. Remember, they only explode when they those red orbs on their bodies start glowing. And now we just need to make our way through. This guy will probably explode as well as I pass. But we can quickly move to the other side and get out of arm's way before he has time to explode. So just pass to the other side and we are good. So really that's the hard section of this segment. The light lady was kind of a pain for sure. But as long as you keep running around, you will be fine. They have all those panels that you can hide. And if you do that and you keep zigzagging around, then she won't be able to catch up with you and you should be good. What have you done to Ruben? Show me! Keep your emotions out of this, Jimenez. He brought this upon himself. We gave him a chance. Where is he? If you really wish to know, he's in the next room. Come, see. Well, that's interesting, and we can get our flashlight back. Goodbye, glowing sticks. And here's another collectible that's very easy to miss. It's one of those excited snails. With those very suggestive sounds that they make. But we're going to ignore that. And we're going to move on to the next room by pointing our flashlight. And we are going to witness another cutscene and then we'll get another collectible. So actually the collectible comes first. Almost forgot. 
So we need to turn these tiles to make the blood spots match with the outside pattern. It's actually pretty simple. So there we go, that one's matching and now let's just rotate this one a little bit. And we want to make the parts that have blood on them match and the parts that don't have blood on them match and that's how we open this and we get another letter scrap. Remember that we'll be able to combine all these pieces at the end if we get all letter scraps of course. Just like we did in the assignment. And I'll point your flashlight here. This is despicable. What is this monstrosity? Despicable? Coming from the man using his own patience to further his own research? The irony of this situation is amusing. But even you must realize what we can do with this. This means STEM will run. We can continue the experiments. And your assistance is even more necessary than before. This whole project, from the beginning it was about deceit. Well, like I said, they only really needed Ruvik's brain and nothing else. I wonder what they did with his actual body. But nonetheless, I bet they destroyed it probably. But I think we all could see that coming, that <laughs> Mobius really was going to steal Ruvik's brain. I saw what they have done to him and I am appalled. To think the young boy I mentored is now this. A mass of grey matter in a glorified test tube. Could they have been planning this all along? And what have I become in all of this? They've managed to keep his mind alive by simulating an artificial body. His consciousness is being confined to a metal straitjacket, a gear in their infernal machine. They have even stricken his name in humanity, referring to him by an anagram, Ruvik. A crude joke, as if spitting on his grave. I almost felt the urge to smash the case and end it right there. But my anger was quickly replaced by scientific curiosity. Reuben's legacy will live on. I will spearhead the next step. I will create something of my own out of this tragedy. What you see here is one of the first STEM prototypes. It requires a physical connection from user to host. A beacon houses a newer version with a wireless transmitter. All the user hears is a high-pitched tone, and they're connected. We've gotten word Jimenez is prepping for unauthorized usage. We would like the trial run to be on our terms, not his. That sound in the patrol car must have been when Jimenez activated it. Joseph, Sebastian, Oscar. They were all pulled in with me. The stem and beacon. That's where it all started. There are some things here that are to remain in the dark. Especially for you, kid. You're asking too many questions, ignoring your mission. Running from responsibility. Just like you always do. No, that's not true! You don't know me! That much is obvious. But we need to make sure you do what you're told. You're lying to me. Hiding things. I can't trust you. Not like this. You are not required to trust us. Only to obey. Okay, well now we know at least how Sebastian and everyone else got connected to the STEM system and entered this world. Apparently it was all Jimenez's fault. But that's all something that we can talk about in the next segment lots of revealing information here however but thank you so much for watching my friends and i'll release the next part shortly take care